There it is, finished. The Heinkel 111 from Airfix. See how I built this, right here, on Gary's stuff. Hi there, I'm Gary, welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you've been here before. Now, today I'm building the kit of the Heinkel HE111P2 in 172nd scale from Airfix. Now, if you've got one of these, wonder how to put it together, this is very much the video for you. If you haven't got one, you wanna see what you get in the box and things like that, then check out the companion box opening video, which has also a history of the aircraft and a history of the 172nd kits in the marketplace. Now today, I'll be cracking on with the build. If you enjoy the video, please do remember Imperial thumbs up on the like button below. If you haven't done so yet, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, and you'll be notified when future videos are released. And of course, for any more concrete support for the channel, you can do that through my partner programs online, through Super Thanks, and now through channel membership. Well, enough of all of that. Let's crack on and make this model of the Heinkel HE111 in 172nd from FX. So we're going to make a start with these instruments, this panel here that sits in the middle of the aircraft, if it's going to stick. Okay, that's where you want to go, right there. Okay. Cool. Then also there's a couple of controls for, I presume the pilot, they look like throttle controls or something. Up here in the front of the aircraft. There we go. That's not right. That's just there. That's just there. There we go. That's better. So there we are. And there's a similar fuselage panel. Needs to go on in the other side of the aircraft. There we go. Next thing I've got to do is spray the um, interiors and of course the partitions that go here, the floor, the bomb racks and so on, um, so I can put them all together. Now, the question is what colours to do them. Now, the instructions say use dark grey throughout. I'm trying to be funny at what 32 dark grey is roughly equivalent to in case I happen to have some around. I don't want to be buying new paint for the inside of an aeroplane. So um, th th there's some contradictions here about what it would have been um, at the time and so on and so forth um, when the dark blue, dark grey story was introduced. I am going to be a bit maverick about this. So I'm going to do the interior here in the usual interior sort of greyish green but do the forward cockpit area in the dark grey because that's what would have been seen from the outside and I think the whole point was at night time you wanted a dark interior. Fighter pilots, if they could see through these windows to what colour was inside, they could, you know, identifying the aircraft's a bit of a moot point really. So I'm going to do the front end, which has got all the glazing, remember, um, in dark, a darkish grey. I'll find one that looks convincing. Uh, the inside of the uh, panel there as well. Then the rest of it I'll do in the regular Luftwaffe medium sort of grey-green colour. And um, we can put the <clears throat> these two... Uh, what are they called? Uh, yeah. Two bulkheads in. Well, it's good when you hear a snapping thing and it's not actually something snapping. I always find. There you
on the floor of the midsection can go in it sort of sits on there but it, there's also like a little tab here on the bulkhead frame so it all sort of sits in really nicely actually the thing about a lot of the more recent tooling so this isn't a brand new tooling by any means but in the last sort of 10 years or so it's the parts actually seem to go together quite well and I know that's something that they work on really hard with the current designers is everything's got to build right you know so um I like, I like that it just sort of sits in that's really good then this rear bulkhead for the bomb area Bombay and all that goes in sort of actually hooks over like that there we go so, so it's got to um contacts on this this side of the rib you can see that the stringers there sort of just go right up against it and that's perfect then it also touches the floor there and there yeah, before we can put in the seat that goes in here we need to put in this bank of switches or whatever it is I don't know what it is really but it's got to go in first sits around there and I can put this seat in like so then this seat back can go in as well just sits up against that okay you can see the seat sits in like that. And with that done, we can put the two halves of the fuselage together. They slot over the uh, beams, like so. This side is a little bit more. Annoying about it. There we go. There we are. So we'll just now tape that up and put some ultra thin runner bead around that around and that will keep it all in place. And for this version of the 111 we just nip off these tail guns, tail cannon, I don't know, actually know what these are. Flum and Verka, I don't know. Anyway, whatever they are, they get taken off. I know someone will know what they are. The two halves of the bomb rack, there's two bomb racks and two halves of each one fit together like this. And you can see on here it says out and then an arrow forward. So this is the outside of the aircraft and pointing forward. So it sits in like so. Same for the other side. Then the bomb bay can go into the bottom of the aircraft. It just sort of slots in very nicely. And that can be just glued in place. We're going to start the front end of the cockpit here with this piece going on this floor piece and then this, this I don't know, but maybe it's where the bomb aimer lies down or something like that. The instructions say to put a side piece on first. I find it easier to put it this way round. Maybe that's just me, I don't know, but I do. So a tiny bit of glue there. And then slot on this piece as well. Like so. So this panel can go in. Just a bit further back, like that. There we go, like that. Then the rudder pedals fit in like so. Then that whole assembly, that whole floor assembly, can slot into the back of the 
cockpit area like so. Okay, so I'm going to let this um, dry and then I can give it um, some dark grey paint inside. And then the pilot seat can go in. This is a bit of a fiddle to get this in, but it will go in eventually. Next to the undercarriage bays, uh, these are just like the top, the roof, and four side pieces. It goes together qu quite straightforwardly. First thing to do with those is make sure these are sitting correctly. Like that, simple as that. Then the bays can go into the wings, like so. Look how the, the front end of the bay sits in with these pieces, it sits flush across here. That's quite, that's very important. And that helps secure where the base should be on the wing. Then when the wheel bays are in place, we can start putting the wing together. When the upper wing is set, you can then put the lower wing on. With the wings built, we can slot in the ailerons at the end of each wing, like so. And also we can slot in the flaps. Now these can be retracted or they can be deployed. And deployed position is up to 65 degrees. Uh, do you know what? Kind of, kind of two thirds of the way from flat to vertical is good enough I suspect I mean if you really want to measure it you can you can get a little gauge out but no, I'm, I'm not that accurate with these things roughly 65 degrees will do for the turplanes uh, the elevators actually sort of click in really they're not they sort of sit in because you're supposed to be able to move them up and down but there we go um, I'm going to put a touch of um, ultra thin in there just to keep them in place because I don't want them moving up and down but there we go that's what the elevator and tailplane look like then the tailplanes can slot into the fuselage and there's a little locator slot here and pin for the elevator Then the rudder can go into place as well. Now there's a an actuator that goes in, goes through here, out the other side, and there's like little um, struts and those. But I'll do those once the kit's been actually painted. Don't want them getting in the way. Okay, so we make the engine nacelle. They come in two halves, as almost everything does on this kit. Everything comes in two halves. Well, not everything, but most things come in two halves. There we go. And they cell goes together like that. And then there's another part of the engine cover sits on here. There we go. Then there's the radiator scoop, which sits like so.
And actually, the other thing must have been a, an oil cooler, because this is definitely a radiator scoop here. Like this. There are no radiator cowling that goes on here. Like so. And finally, there's this inlet on the side. I'm going to guess that's the carburetor air inlet or something like that. I don't know. Anyway, that's all the parts of the engine. Then the engine sits on the front of the wing, like so. Right, it's time for um, the transparencies to go on. And first of all, I'm going to mask them. Now, yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of bits to mask. Lots and lots and lots of glassware here. So, get a masking set. And, uh, but whoever you get it from, just get a mask set. It's It will save you so much time and effort. And it will look great. I will say with this one, there's a bit of confusion. Um, you know, they call this G5VV, um, whereas here it's called G8. And here, this bit G8 here, there's one piece called G8. Um, and this has patch 19 on it. Well, patch 19 on here is, is this tiny thing. There's also a patch 19 here. That's actually G19. A, a, or is it? No, that's actually a part. That part is G8. Um, G8 goes here where it says 19. Uh, it's not that clear, so we're going to have to do a little bit of um, working around to figure it all out. With the fuselage closed up, we can start attaching some of the transparent parts. Now, this actually isn't going to be mainly transparent. As you can see, there's only a, like a load of windows, really, and this big panel here that are going to stay transparent, but... It's moulded in transparency rather than mould it in plastic and have to fit all these windows. And it also allows for more than one version. So there's a, a couple of inserts here and here that go in in a minute that um, help define this as a P2 aircraft. Interestingly, the uh, decal here is broken, so I'll have to reassemble it on the... Oh, it's, it's just, you know, I've soaked this for ages and it's just not coming off. Which is unusual, their fixed ones do come off normally very, very easily, very cleanly. But because they're cast graph, in fact. Their fix don't make them cast graph, does. So. It's just a little bit of some instrument or other in here that I can possibly coax into place. We'll see. I'll try my best. Wish me luck. I'll leave that alone. And there are some more instruments that go into an overhead. Uh, an overhead here, which is here. So if we can coax this to focus on this instead. I can't. I'll show you when it's done. Now I need to put a machine gun into this transparency before it goes on the aircraft, which is you know, it's always a bit of a pain. What you can do is just put a couple of dots of PVA on, spray the whole thing, come back, take this, these off, put the guns back on, and then put back on the aircraft. But you know what, I'm not going to do that this time. But what I will do is make sure I glue them in using a bit of PVA. I don't want any crazing of the part on the 
transparency later. So use a bit of PVA to hold it in place. The same PVA you use to glue all of the transparencies into the aircraft. Then you can put the clear parts into the transparency that's already there on the bottom of the plane. And when they're dry, the control panels, also instrument panels, can go into this top transparency here. Like so. can start assembling the nose transparency as well. Start with the main top there. And what I do with these side windows is just use a grease pencil, Chinagraph pencil, to grip the outside of the glass, the, the covered bit thing I've masked off already and then put it in like that and just work your way around with all of the transparent parts make sure they're all lined up and of course ultimately the one last piece of the proverbial puzzle which needs to fit over all the other pieces. Now that is going to take a bit of messing around. Okay so for each engine, we front of the engine here we've got the mounting pin for the propeller later on. Let's get that okay. Now if you want the propellers to turn you don't glue this. I don't particularly care whether the propellers turn or not. So I'm going to dab it a bit of glue in. I prefer that these were sort of stable and sat there um, while I was spraying and stuff like this. You can of course leave this bit off completely and then um, spray it and put them on later. But I like to do it as much as I can in one go. There we go. Grand. So then with that in place we can pop the front of the engine on like so, engine this cell anyway, like so, and leave that to set. All of the glassware is on now including this this piece here, G8. This can be open or closed, it's like a hatch. You can have it open or closed. This is where the uh, mid-upper gunner is going to go. I'm not putting any of the kissing around there at the moment. I'm just going to cover that up for spraying. Then on the bottom, um, we've got the gear doors and the bomb base. Now they both come with options for closed or open, so if you use the closed ones they'll fit in there and be your masks for all of that. So that's all pretty much ready to go to final prime and then start spraying. So the first thing we're going to do now is give the underside a coating of the... RLM 65 light blue. And so once you've done the, the 
bottom coat, the, the underside, mask that off to the top side mask off the bits you want of the camouflage and then finish it off. Now, the, the thing that I find strange and actually annoys me a bit is that the this colour looks like green and grey and yes they're both types of green um, but 242 here is the RLM 71 dark green which actually looks like this not green, it looks, and the grey is the RM70 Schwarzgun, the black grey, clues in the name. So you gotta just make up your mind whether you follow the numbers or the appearance of the colours. So I'm gonna follow the appearance of the colours because I like it that way. But it's it's it seems daft to me that the dark green is in grey and the black green is in green on these diagrams but that's just me I don't know anyway I'll finish off the masking I'll use some putty or some tape between the masks and I'll spray it with the black green RM70 right now we've put the second coat of colour on and also coated it in a gloss varnish because we're now going to attach the markings Markings always go on better with gloss varnish. They set better with gloss varnish. So refer to your instruction sheet as to where things go. And you'll find... I think it's one, two. Let's see if it goes on this one here. And let it set, and then you can apply some microsol or some, um, some solvent, micro solvent to it to help it set if it needs it. But otherwise, just use micro set to help it set into the um, into the lines of the panels there. Forgetting what to say, lets it set into the panel lines. Go around the plane doing the decals, do all the stencils, um, then when they're done, when they're set, then we'll come back and do a bit of weathering. Right, moving towards the end now, we can put in this rear gun position. And we can put in the gun mounting. Is it here? And put the gun in place as well. Okay. Like that. Then I can put the sliding cover over the front, like so. This is in the open position, obviously. First thing is the front, the main leg itself goes into the back of the engine bulkhead there. Front of the engine bay, there's a couple of small holes that it sits into. Then the this leg in place kind of down here somewhere then there's this bracing leg that slots into a hole in the back wall of the main leg like that then this leg 
kind of meets up with it. Around there somewhere. Very fiddly. Very fiddly. There we go. So, plugs into the back wall. There's a flat bit here, and this um, horizontal diagonal leg here sits at the top of that. And then the leg sits into the back of the main gear leg just above the axle joint. And just put the other one in, and then do the other side. And the tail wheel just sits into the back here, like so. There and then there's a small door that fits in here as well. Then when the gear is in place, you can put the gear doors in. There's a couple of tabs that they sit into. So, right, the propeller, the propeller hub has a notch that fits into this notch here. So it sits like so. Right in there. And I'll just put a bit of glue. On that, and the spinner also has a, a notch on it. The inside, so it sits like this. So, and again, a bit of glue, and that's done. Just do the same for the other side. The propellers can go on as well at this point. And put the exhaust stubs in as well. And after that, just go around fitting the last few bits of pieces of aerials and pitot probes and the like. And the kit's finished. There we go, the Heinkel 111. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I did. Uh, it's a few things. I, the, all the glass around the nose was a bit of a fiddle at times. Um, a couple of bits of fit issue, but really not that much. Most of the time, a really nice kit to make. So, um, yeah, if you've enjoyed it, please do remember, Imperial thumbs up on the like button below if you haven't done so yet. Subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, and you'll be notified of all the future videos as they arrive. In any case, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you next time. Take care now. Goodbye.